June 14, 2011, school board business meeting. Could we all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Um, are there any adjustments to the agenda, please? One adjustment. Um, we, I will be nominating the new Director of Instructional Support tonight. This is your last meeting for a while, and the selection panel completed its work on Monday. So okay. I will make that nomination tonight. And that will be, um, that will be with, um, let's see, where will that go? Be under E seven E with the nomination. Okay. Right after the four teachers were nominated. Okay, great. Um, and then, do I, do I have another motion, um, Michael, or another? Uh, an, an uh, addition is addition? to uh, add um, um, uh, for the approval of uh, an employment uh, agreement for the interim superintendent. Okay. So maybe we'll make that um, item number J under. Um, New business. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, um, we will start with approval of school board minutes. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the regular meeting Tuesday, May 10th, 2011? I move that we approve the meeting, the minutes of the regular meeting. Tuesday, May 10th, 2011. Thank you. May I have a second? Okay. Michael, um, all right. Any discussion? No adjustments? Okay. All those in favor? Great. About um, the special business meeting, Wednesday, June 1st, 2011. Do we have a motion to approve those minutes, please? I move that we approve the minutes of the special business meeting from Wednesday, June 1st, 2011. Do I have a second? Okay. Any discussion? No? All those in favor? Great. All right. Comments by student representatives. Big props to Matt McClavick for being here post-graduation. I cannot believe you're here. <laughs> And thank you for being here, and congratulations um, for your graduation on Sunday. That was um, really a delightful moment to see you walk across the stage and to get to shake your hand. And thank you for, I'd like to publicly thank you for your service to this board for two years and um, for always being here and, and being a supportive presence for the students. Um, we really appreciate your service. So. Thanks. It's been a a lot of fun the last two years. I've definitely gotten to learn a lot. And well, we you've managed to have a little fun along the way. So. Yeah, we wish you a lot of luck. Thanks. Um, in terms of the high school, um, as mentioned, graduation was Sunday. And for the rest of the uh, high school, this is finals week. And I believe it wraps up Thursday, so make up day on Friday. Um, athletically, there are two or three teams left, I think. I know lacrosse has a game in Falmouth tomorrow. Uh, for the Western Finals. So playoffs are either done for most teams or halfway through. And then the students are really just looking forward to the summer. Yeah. Almost there. I love that. And can you remind us where you're headed? Uh, Notre Dame. Great. Congratulations. Thanks. Great. Any other student reps in the audience? I don't see any. Okay. All right, recognition, um, or no, comments from public on agenda items, I'm sorry. Any comments from the public on items that are on the agenda? No? Okay. All right, so um, now we're moving on to recognition. Uh, and the first item is CIF and the Parents Association. Um, I would like to, I, I would like to thank um, each parents association, starting with the PCPA, 
and Janelle Deschino and Katie Gillespie, who head up that organization for their work for the schools. Um, they raise roughly $40,000 a year and use it towards events like the Haunted Harvest, Arts Day, um, independent teacher grants. Uh, they put together the Kids Courier um, and the Pond Cove 5K, just to name a few of um, the events that they put together uh, with their fundraising. Um, then there's the MSPA with Ann Ingalls and Lisa Stevens at the helm. They also raise roughly um, $40,000, uh, but a significant part of um, the money they raise goes to support the week-long Chuanki outdoor experience that all sixth graders have the opportunity to participate in. Um, uh, that used to be funded through the school budget, but they have picked up quite a bit of that funding and parents fund the remainder of it. Um, they also have, um, they fund grants for teachers and staff wishes that fall outside the school budget. Uh, the High School Parents Association, Sue Layton and Trish Brigham, uh, they spend a, um, a great deal of time supporting school climate issues. This year they hosted a multi-district screening of the Race to Nowhere, um, which uh, talked about the dark side of America's achievement culture and its effect on our students. Um, they also fund other grants. There, um, because the high school uh, has uh, lots of organizations asking for funding, including booster organizations, this is a, they have a much smaller pot of, um, of money that they grant out, but they, they do a fair bit with that, including um, they helped fund the speaker system for the cafeteria and display cases um, for our award-winning theater program, uh, as well as supporting programs like Mock Trial. Uh, then there is CEIF that we would like to thank as well. Uh, Tim Thompson and Trish Brigham again. Uh, they, this year, had four to $6,000 in rolling grants that they um, distributed to schools, as well as a large grant, which many of you may heard of, um, that will generously allow our high school students to have the opportunity to ha have one-on-one -on -one computing in the coming year. Uh, as well as all of these educational organizations, we also have our boosters, um, who raise a great deal of money for our athletic programs. Uh, all in all, uh, John Christie crunched the numbers during budget time, and we look at the, what is raised through our groups, and, and this is just financially. Um, we'll hear from Gail Schmader later um, in the evening about what sort of the, the gift of time that we get. This is the gift of money, but um, total external parent funds um, have reached the half million dollar mark, maybe a little more. Um, so we would like to thank all of those organizations for their time and their efforts, but more importantly for um, what they do in terms of bringing community together. That is a, a great value of these parents' associations is the support that they offer our teachers and our students um, in terms of, of building a strong school community. Uh, so we would like to honor them tonight and, and thank them for their um, service to our schools. Mary, could, could I just make a brief, um, a, a brief correction about the PCPA? Because you mentioned a number of events um, that, the, that they yes. host, uh, included Haunted Harvest and the Ponco 5K. Those events are actually their, those are their fundraising events. Mm -hmm. So those, those, while they are great community events and, um, and while they require a lot of volunteer time to, mm -hmm. to put those events together. They actually generate funds for the PCPA. That's not where they're spending their funds. Their funds are going into, mm -hmm. um, primarily right into the classroom to support. Okay. It, the, over the last several years, I'm, I'm not an expert on PCPA grants, but a lot of technology in Pond Cove has come from, from PCPA. <coughs> um, so the, the, those events are generating cash, and that cash is, is being invested in the in the classrooms. Right. Okay. I just wanted to point that out. Okay. Great. Thank you, John. Any other comments? Okay. 
I, I would like just to personally thank SEAF and the Parents Association for how welcome and invited they made me feel when I began here in January. Um, um, it was really nice to, to experience that sort of invitation. And what you mentioned, Mary, I just want to piggyback on. Uh, when I have learned what they have provided to the schools, both SEAF and the Parents Association, it is really amazing. Uh, the extra support that they provide to the school budget, I think it's probably unparalleled, certainly in the state of Maine. It's just an extraordinary effort that both groups make. So just wanted to add my personal thanks. Um, if there are no other comments about um, the Parents Associations and SEAF, let's move on to retirees. We have some goodbyes to say today. Um, and we'll start with Pond Cove. Good evening. It's my great pleasure, although it's tinged with sadness, to make a, a brief remarks. I can't do their careers much justice with brief remarks about two um, Pond Cove retirees we're here to honor tonight, Judy Fronte and Shari Robinson. The good news about both of them is that they're very well prepared for their retirement. They have plenty of things to do with their families and friends after life after Pond Cove. The not so good news is they won't be here anymore. They have both, however, left a, a quite a legacy. I'll start with Judy, because in alphabetical order. Judy, in case you don't know, has been the music teacher at Pond Cove for an entire generation, about 30 years more or less. Cape Elizabeth, again, as you well know, has a well-earned reputation for our students' accomplishments in choral and instrumental music. And Judy is the one who gets them all started in their formative years. I was thinking about this last week. I can't imagine, maybe you can help me do it, how many recorders are distributed in houses all around the town of Cape Elizabeth. <laughs> Still used. Yes. That's where it all starts. That's the origins of the interest and later the, the dedication, the time that, that put in that becomes uh, the, the, the talented seniors who just graduated. And I bet most of the kids and probably a lot of the grown-ups in the area can still sing the songs they practice at the grade level concerts. When Judy decided to retire, I wondered what I should tell candidates about the real job description as opposed to the one on paper. So I asked myself, should I tell them the assignment includes carrying portable equipment back and forth to the cafetorium, always with a smile? Does it include being thoughtful enough to publicly thank the custodians for their setup and takedown work for concerts? How about collaborating with classroom teachers so that reading song lyrics supports the literacy program? Or making sure that Pond Cove teachers, including the really shy ones, feel comfortable enough to sing and dance on stage for the annual Dr. Seuss production in front of a critics of our you know, case before critics. Or how about making arrangements for groups of senior citizens to hear our students sing? Does it also include the ability to transform an anxiety-ridden situation into an opportunity for group singing? Judy does all of these, the last one most memorably at St. Bart's after the whole school evacuated there, there a few years ago. Some kids actually wanted to stay longer instead of feeling scared. <laughs> they were enjoying the experience. During her time here, Judy has embodied the love of the arts that's influenced the entire culture of the school. Pra practicing both what she preaches and she teaches, Judy, Judy has helped integrate to the arts in the lives of a lot of people, and we're all the better for that. So thank you, Judy, for sharing your gifts and best wishes for the next phase of your life. Another retiree, who is also a member of the Allied Arts team, is a rare combination of IQ and EQ. A paragon of professionalism in her chosen specialty area, Shari, through the pursuit of various influential roles outside of the Library and Media Center, has modeled the very same inquisitive attitude and research skills that she has so passionately imparted to all of her Pond Cove classes. She's been a team leader, staff developer, head of the Teacher Association, teacher leader, unofficial social chair, protector of vulnerable children. Shari blends her wide-ranging and deep educational knowledge with a personal commitment to social responsibility that brings out the best in all of us. 
Shari's modest about her own accomplishments, even after earning her doctorate a few years ago. Um, so we didn't know until recently that this scholar, teacher scholar's interest included a detailed knowledge of Smurf figurines. Like Tom's of Maine's and Bert's Bees, though sadly for both Clark and Shari, without the financial windfall, Shari's research night started small, just as an evening meeting of a small number of kids eager to share what they had learned through following the steps of the research strand, the one championed by Mrs. Robinson. From those modest beginnings, research night has grown to a large-scale festival of learning, so large, in fact, that to accommodate all the eager participants, Shari divided research night into research nights. It was either that or book the Civic Center. <laughs> The Library Media Center is the heart of the school, and Shari has made it that way. I hope you're proud of your professional accomplishments, and you will now shift to applying your talent and energy to more personal pursuits. Thank you very much. We, you will be missed. Um, you guys are both, um, you are icons in the halls of Pond Cove and, and you will be missed and I think you're completely irreplaceable so um, thank you for your service and we'll look forward to seeing what you do next. I have a feeling um, it won't be on the golf course. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's move on to the middle school. Joe, I believe you're next up. Yes, Mr. Down. Board members, Dr. Murphy, uh, thank you very much for an opportunity to speak tonight about probably two of my favorite people I've taught with for years, but I'd like to congratulate first all the retirees who I've known for years. They've taught my kids. They're, they're great, great people. Um, it's exciting to watch what you're going to be able to do, but it's, it's sad to see you go. You've been great people to our town. And we, I know my family really appreciates it. Um, secondly, to Matt McClavick, who I had in sixth grade. I've known since third grade, coached him. Um, congratulations. Um, you've done well. Um, don't forget your old teacher when there's any extra Notre Dame football tickets. <laughs> <laughs> but good luck, Matthew. Um, I've taught with Mary Beth and Margaret for 20 years. Um, if you want to Describe those people with one word, it would be class. If you wanted to move it to two words, it would be first class. They're truly great people. Um, they've been ideal teammates, great people to work with. They're hardworking. They've maintained outstanding professional pupil and teacher relationships, nurturing them, teaching them, disciplining them when they have to, but it's always been at a professional level, and they were great role models for all of us teachers following along with them. They're also loyal. At a time when loyalty is almost non-existent in society, you can see it in professional sports, you can see it in entertainment and politics. Um, these ladies combined gave 54 great years to Cape Elizabeth, which truly itself, um, we're all the better for it. Um, their loyalty was, I know, greatly appreciated by a lot of families and a lot of teachers uh, alike. They were instrumental to the language arts program. Mary Beth, heavy into the reading and reading comprehension. She she pounded it to him. I had a son that went through there and said, boy, you really never learned how to read, and you really learned to know what you read about when you had Mrs. Benoit. So it was very great. Margaret with a passion for writing. Um, Margaret would develop prompts, would correct till the wee hours, um, come up with great ideas, share them with me. It was, it was hard enough she had to grade 40 papers. I'd go sauntering in and say, could you look at this paper i got to write for John Casey for my evaluations? Sure, no problem. <laughs> so she always came through. Um, great lover of social studies and history as well, which I taught with them. We exchanged ideas and videos for years. Um, we wanted to make sure it was interesting for the kids, exciting, fun at the same time. So it was really great that we always could share those things. Um, and I was all the better for it. I benefited from a lot of the, their great work, but I, I will surely miss it. Um, I once asked my wife, and my wife, I believe my wife asked me, said, besides me, hon, um, who do you admire, admire most in life? I said, well, I said, well, hon, that's an easy one. That's, that would be my, my big sister. You know her well. She represents, she's a kind, kind, late, kind lady, um, very nurturing. Um, you know what big sisters are like. They're wonderful. I've always considered those two my, my big sisters. 
when I'm away from home and on the team. Um, they've helped us tremendously. Their rooms are always open. Um, sometimes there's a line. We might need advice on a, on a writing prompt or history or just um, raising kids. We've been in there, and they've always been there. I know they've been there for me, and I, I hold them in the greatest, greatest regard. Um, outstanding people. Um, we're surely going to miss you. Um, my day typically starts at the middle school at about 10 minutes to 7. I'll walk up the stairs, and I have for 20 years, and the first person I see is a smiling Mary Beth Benoit with always a, a kind word, um, always a laugh. It's a great way to start the day. I'll surely miss it. And Mary Beth and I have proven that Republicans and Democrats can get along and solve many things. <laughs> We've proven that, Mary Beth. Um, and the day will go on, and usually my day will end about five after a practice or a long trip to Lake Region. And lo and behold, when I go up to my room to get my gear, there's Margaret Welch sitting at her desk, running off papers um, on her computer, um, always checking in, seeing how I'm doing, making sure she says, you don't sleep enough, make sure you take good care of yourself. Um, these, these, that's a great way to start the day and a great way to end the day. Um, we'll never be able to replace you. As I tell my cross-country kids when they're in eighth grade, we can't replace you. We'll just reload. We'll do the best we can without you, but it's, it's certainly not going to be um, easy. These um, ladies have been great people to work with. They've, they've been dynamite. I will surely, surely miss them, and on behalf of the sixth grade team, I know they will as well, but it's going to be an exciting time for them. I know Margaret has um, her granddaughter Alice and another one on the way, and she's going to rest up to spoil them and make sure she can babysit. And, Mary Beth, I think the LPGA tour is calling, so we need more time on Paputic um, and fine-tune those, those skills. But um, I surely hope you come back and, and visit us, but I, I can't tell you how much you've meant to me and the whole sixth grade team. So I wish you the best of luck, and thank you very much for everything. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret and, and Mary Beth. We appreciate all of your service to all of the children in Cape Elizabeth. I know. I, I, I guess I'd like to calculate how many children you have both taught over the years that you've been here. And um, my children were not fortunate enough to have either of you, but um, have heard the best of things of both of you. And um, certainly, if you have jo the Joe Doan stamp of approval, that's <laughs> that's it. Um, a huge honor. So thank you for being with us, and we wish you the best of luck in the coming years. And I'm guessing Mary Beth is a golfer. <laughs> no, <laughs> well, that's what retirement's for. <laughs> oh, well, good for you. Um, then I think, um, Susan, are you going to speak? Susan Dana is going to speak. Hi, I'm here as a representative of the World Language Team and the, the middle school to uh, talk about Conrad Berthiel. Don't worry, I'm not gonna, it's not going to be that long. But, <laughs> but um, one word which I'm, I'm going to throw out, there's a the word sky and cloud. And when Conrad started his career in the 60s, um, was a result of, of Sputnik going up in the, in the late 1950s. And that was the beginning of World Language Program, not beginning, but it was a new um, influence and uh, uh, importance on World Language Programs and language labs in the 60s. And in the 70s, we, um, thinking more of the materials that we had, we went to reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders. And then 70s to 80s was cassettes. And then 80s to 90s, we um, still cassettes, some CDs. And then the, the 21st century MP3, and now everything's back up. It's in the cloud again. Our textbook is entirely on the cloud now, our listening comprehension. So it's interesting how over a 40-year career, more than 40 years, it's just it's still in the cloud. Conrad's been with us for 13 years. He came to teach part-time at the middle school, and he's been here for 13 <coughs> years. Um, there's just so much to say about Conrad. My, my colleagues wanted me to make sure I mentioned his, uh, his willingness to evolve, and I think that's part of starting in the 60s and going all the way through to the 21st century, and he has just really embraced the technology. I know for all of us it was a big change, transferring over to the use of technology, and Conrad has just been right on board with that, and he's got students publishing movies and doing all sorts of wonderful things there, their retail stores and, and everything else. So, um, let me see. Um, the other thing about Conrad is he really keeps us grounded. I think we've been, every Monday for the past couple of years, we do all our, our curriculum work, and these are the standards for foreign language learning in the 21st century. And we're, we're constantly discussing sentences such as, 
Um, the use of grammatical, lexical, phonological, semantic, pragmatic, and discourse features necessary for participation in the communicative modes. And after a discussion about 10 or 15 minutes, Conrad said, doesn't that just mean we want the students to be able to speak French? <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's it. So Conrad has just been our rock. Just common sense, good head on his shoulders, and um, we really appreciate that, Conrad. I think also the students, uh, it's really telling to me two things I can think of. She's been asked to come back and speak to students at 8th grade recognition night, which is actually taking place right now over at the middle school this evening. And also he's been invited back by some high school students to come back and address their class. So I think that's really telling of the respect that the students have for you, Conrad. So um, kind of bring it back to the, the club. The Spanish have a wonderful um, word which they use for retirement. It's jubilarse. And la jubilación is your retirement. And literally it means to rejoice. And Conrad knows this. I, I, um, but just for those of you that, that don't know, but um, it's just a wonderful expression, I think, for this next stage in one's life when it's really a rejoicement. Rather, retiring, which is a somewhat negative connotation, I think we rejoice with Conrad, and Conrad, we hope that you're rejoicing as you have time to look at the clouds and up in the sky. And, uh, you know, we just wish you the best, and we're really, really going to miss you. And thank you so much for all that you've done for students in Cape Elizabeth and also. Um, as a colleague in, in the school system. So thank you and rejoice. Thank you, Conrad. Um, we have a retirement at the high school as well. Um, looking at Elaine there, sitting with Bill, I was reminded that I actually knew, Bill was actually the first of the Brownells that I knew um, as a young lawyer um, working in Portland, going to the federal court clerk's office the first time and being somewhat intimidated by those surroundings. He was one of the first people I met and I thought, this guy could be really gruff and mean because I'm sure I've made about 16 mistakes and he was very kind and gentle and calm. Um, and that may not have always been the case, but that was always my experience with him, um, is that when you'd make mistakes, he'd say, Jeff, you know, you want to do this, don't do it this way, you want to say this, the judges, you know. And I've since come to conclude, having, having for the last 10 years had the great privilege to work with Elaine, um, to conclude that Bill gets that off from Elaine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, not really. <laughs> Um, it has been a tremendous uh, privilege for the 10 years that I've been here uh, to work with Elaine. There are certain teachers, I think, in every school, that, the three schools that I've been in, I can look back and think about the two or three teachers in the school who sort of embody not just, not just the head of the school, but the heart of the school as well. Um, and Elaine has heard this before, but maybe in a slightly different way, without any question over the last two or three years, we've actually lost. Uh, Three big ones, and I think Elaine is just about the biggest uh, loss. Um, comes close to being the beating heart of the school. Uh, we lost a couple years ago Katie Lisa, and then Nancy Murphy, um, and now Elaine. That's huge. So when we go through our hiring process, we have to say, okay, who has the potential to be that heart side of the school as well? Um, I, it's my great pleasure, um, except during the weeks when graduation looms and, and the hecticness of the end of the year, to be able to wander around the school um, and go in and sit in on teachers' classes and that sort of thing. And it is always a great pleasure to go into every class, but it's really amazing to go into Elaine's because um, she has all these awards named after her, and, and unless you've been in her classroom, it's hard to understand why. Uh, but I understand why. I mean, she combines really clear organization, a real direction to what's going on, but, but she combines that with just an amazingly caring attitude uh, towards the kids. She takes the time, she knows them, uh, she watches them and plays and concerts and sporting events and everything else. And one of the things that I appreciate, um, just as somebody who watches a lot of teachers teach, is sometimes I'll go into a classroom and think, oh, okay, this is... John Doe in her classroom, who is a hellion in every other teacher's classroom, and in this class, he or she is just sitting there, just absorbing things, um, not causing problems, paying attention, 
And one of the things that I have really, the very little subtle things, but that go into that really great teachers have is the ability to check for kids' understanding, to have a real good sense about where they are, because kids get really frustrated and act out when either the teacher is teaching way beyond them um, or way below them, and they get frustrated either way. Um, and a, a really, really great teacher knows their kids so well that they can sense that. Um, and they can ask questions, and they can keep them involved, and keep them stimulated. And I believe that that's actually one of the, the keys to what makes Elaine so successful, is that she knows the kids really well as people, but she checks in with them frequently as learners. Um, so she is very rarely either way, be, way ahead or way behind. And so you just don't have issues coming out of Elaine's classroom. The other thing she does just really well and is the clarity of her instruction is just fantastic. It is methodical, it is clear, it is multicolored with all kinds of different uh, felt markers or whatever those things are called these days. Um, I'm sure there was colored chalk in the past. I think I remember before we got whiteboards. Um, she also is, glad, is a, a teacher who is, no matter how well she does it for how many years, is willing to take risks. And several years ago she took a risk. Uh, by joining the Achievement Center at its inception and really being the liaison between the math department and the Achievement Center. Um, and she is just absolutely a stalwart there. Um, and, and that's why her presence for five years until other teachers joined her this year is why the math teacher is so well aligned with the Achievement Center and why the Achievement Center so well supports the work of the math teachers. She was also able tremendously to keep up with frustration. During the first few years that I was there, the state was trying to impose across the state some graduation requirements according to this thing called the Comprehensive Local Assessment System. Um, and Lane was department chair at that time, and she actually tried to make it work. It was the stupidest, god-awful idea the state's ever had. Um, and she did it with such optimism and determination um, until she finally threw up her hands and said, enough is enough, this is absolutely crazy. And she was absolutely right. Um, she just hung in, it, hung in there uh, with it for a lot longer than many of us did. So for all those reasons, I will also say she is one of Cape Elizabeth's great fans, and I have a true confession to make to the school board that I may have overstepped my bounds. I am not sure. Uh, I hope I haven't. But um, at their going away ceremony that we had at a faculty meeting recently, I took upon myself the authority to give Elaine and one guest, whom I presume will be Bill, uh, most times anyway, uh, the ability in perpetuity to attend all of Cape Elizabeth High School's basketball games, soccer games, athletic events, concerts, and other things, uh, free of charge as very, very, very honored guests. And I personally look forward to seeing them many times in the past at those events as I have um, in the future as I, as I have in the past. So we are going to miss uh, Elaine's the beating heart of Cape Elizabeth High School. But thank you very much for all the years of wonderful teaching. David has something he'd like to say. Um, I, I would like to say something, Elaine. I, I said something, I interrupted the last time that we were, your resignation was announced because I couldn't stand to see you go quietly into the night. So I'm going to now say, get a chance to say something with you here. Um, I only say three things. I did first meet the Brownells the same way Jeff did at the federal court through Bill. I remember recently going to a football game, running up the stadium steps, and Bill had a big smile and said he was going high David, and I went, I'm not here to talk to you. I'm here to talk to the important Brownell. So I started talking to Elaine about my son. I, I would like to say two things about Elaine. Uh, first, Jeff mentioned uh, head and heart. And I, I guess I would add a third thing, soul. I, I have had the privilege of having my son take Elaine for two years. And uh, my son is a very shy lad, unlike his father. Um, and blossomed under Elaine, and she has the perfect mix of intellect, the ability to teach, the ability to convey complicated things, at least to me, highly complicated things like algebra, but at the same time care about the basically still children she teaches. And I know that um, it was that combination of caring and teaching that got my son through in He's doing quite well in math now. I was thinking of majoring in math to my utter 
surprise. Um, but I, I, I think if you could, my third thing is I think if you could clone the perfect teacher, uh, it would be Elaine. The perfect combination of knowledge, um, approachness. She, there was never a time I, didn't, I never thought my son couldn't get the extra help or any child. And quite frankly, the heart and soul that both Jeff and I mentioned. It is a tremendous combination. And I'm hoping that um, some of our plans about keeping Elaine on will come to fruition in some respect. But um, I, I do personally want to thank you, Elaine, for everything you've done for my child. And on behalf of all the children of Cape, you have, you have been a wonderful teacher. Thank you. Um, and I would like to second David's um, sentiments, Elaine. And I, I do hear you may be around the high school a little bit here and there. So I'm happy to see that we're. <laughs> oh, I, I'm hoping that that's true. I think there's, you still have a lot to um, offer in terms of mentorship and, and um, citizenship to the kids. So thank you and to other teachers. Um, we do have a gift for each of the retirees, which um, we will give to you. Um, at, we'll, we'll break in a few moments for refreshments, and we would like to present you with a photograph. Um, and we'll give those to you in a few moments. We do have one other person to recognize to my right, who um, this will be our last meeting with um, Dr. Ken Murphy, who has served as interim since January. And um, we are so grateful for the time that you spent with us. And um, I know there are other board members who would like to say, um, who would like to say a few things. David, I know you said you were going to. Can I go last again? Do you want to go last? Is that the, the most preferable position? You're going to turn this into a very long meeting, huh? No, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's our parting shot to you. <laughs> well, I'll just say, um, as chair, um, Ken, you made it as easy as possible for me. Uh, you were always there um, with uh, just crisp guidance. <laughs> and um, just good common sense. And I always appreciated um, every minute that you gave me uh, to give me your thoughts and your opinions on, on different items. And um, I really um, valued your opinions. And it, it's going to be a little difficult not to, not to have you as a, a sounding board for, for um, all of the different issues that come up, because you certainly um, have the experience and the knowledge and the um, common sense to really um, guide um, a young board through um, a, a really difficult year. And I appreciate uh, all the time you spent talking about the different candidates and you know the two searches that you spent um, really going over things with us and, and um, offering us some clarity around what our expectations were. And, um, so thank you for that. In addition to all of, the, all of the business items you had to take care of to keep the district running smoothly, it really helped us as a board, I think, focus on the most important task at hand, which was um, hiring a new superintendent. So thank you for doing that. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, I would like to thank you, Ken, for, um, for everything that I've learned from you uh, in this short number of months. Um, we, we think a lot on the board about how to, how to help nurture a, 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 an environment of continuous improvement, and, and Ken um, very gently turned that around and, and focused that lens on, on the board itself and, and taught us a lot about, uh, or, and, and had us think a lot about how to be a more effective uh, board, and, and uh, I think that that um, work has taken us a, a, a very great distance, um, and I appreciate uh, your helping us with that. And, and uh, I think you put us in a, in a great position with respect to starting a new um, chapter with the new superintendent. And, and, uh, and I, again, I want to thank you for, for everything I've learned from you about leadership uh, through that process. Thanks, John. Anyone else? Kathy? Um, I'm short. Sure. Um, I just wanted to. Uh, everybody else talks a lot, you know. Um, I just wanted to thank you for lending your vast superintendent experience to Cape Elizabeth, and I know that I and the children of Cape Elizabeth benefited from your time here. Thank you.
Chris. <laughs> well, I have to say, um, you're in the right field. You picked the right field. Watching, I loved watching you address every um, child at the graduation going through. And I know if you have said you'd stay here longer if your golf wasn't calling you, um, and you could have, the other children could have benefited. But your sincerity at um, making eye contact, the joy you had of them coming across the stage. I don't know how you felt, Matt, when you shook um, Ken's hand, but I think it was probably easy to come across and end their careers, high school careers with you. Um, your humor, your honestness, your forthrightness. You can read a room. Um, thank you very much. I, I um, hopefully will take those skills back with me. Go forward. Okay, I'll quickly just, I'll be like Kathy too. <laughs> um, Ken, I really appreciated your outgoing um, and willingness to meet everybody, particularly during the beginning of the year. Myself being new to the board, I, every time somebody would say, hey, Kim, how do, you, how do you like being on the school board? And I just, my answer is, it's really interesting. It's really interesting. But you've made that process more interesting. And I've definitely learned a lot, um, particularly, you know, in terms of how a good budget works, you know, a, a one that's well constructed and put together. And I thought that was um, a testament to your work this year. So we'll miss you. And I, but I don't blame you for going where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> so say hello to all those guys down there, <laughs> players. But good luck to you. Thank you. Ken, I'd like to uh, thank you. Uh, one big impact I think you had on uh, the board is, you know, um, we get, you know, involved in the, in the, you know, the meeting after meeting, and you brought the pers help to remind us that we have a supportive community, we have wonderful teachers, and we have very bright students that there's, uh, tremendous resources in the community. Uh, one of the biggest, probably the biggest task we had as a board was hiring uh, the new superintendent. And um, it's easy to use, um, you know, marketing phrases. We want someone visionary. We want someone with a lot of energy. It was much easier for us to prioritize what we wanted because you kind of mo you you modeled the type of leader uh, Cape Elizabeth needs. So I think as we went through the search and we learn more about you, we are like, that's exactly the, the type of uh, potential we want in, in the next superintendent. So I think um, without you being here, I, you know, I would like to think we'd have hired someone of similar quality, but I think through your modeling and your leadership, you really helped us identify what our community needs. So thank you. Thank you. Does that mean I can't talk? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave with my chin again. David, we have that planned. <laughs> <laughs> Push the little button and anything else. I will try to be crisp for me. Um, I just want to tell you, Ken, that um, when you came, we were in a bit of disarray. I guess that's a fair way to put it. And not just from a new superintendent search, from a variety of issues. Uh, uh, some discord between us and the district team leadership and I cannot picture a person who accomplished more in such a short period of time as you did. It was astonishing. It's, it's fun being on this board. It's fun working for, with the DLT. It, it, the whole atmosphere has changed and I guess the one word I would put um, to describe you is you are, you are a complete professional. I have never um, felt better guidance or felt more confidence or felt was a more honorable person to work with than you. And I don't use the word honor lightly. Um, uh, and I will end, be Chris, by ending, ending on one note, which Ken will appreciate, some of you may not, but I was told a lot about Ken from the chairman of the Yama School Board, who's been one of my best friends since we we're sophomores in college. And, and of course, he told Ken a lot about me. Um, and I can honestly say that everything uh, Mr. Ray told me about you was absolutely true. That you were the best person he's ever worked with and we weren't getting, we, we couldn't find a finer person. And I absolutely agree with David. And whatever he said about me is not true. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you very much. Well, thank you for those kind words. I'm uh, definitely going to get it. I think Matt wants to say Oh, I'm sorry, Matt. Sorry. Um, 
I guess I just wanted to thank you. Um, from the very first week you got here, you sat down and met with Reed and I, but probably more importantly, with students from all the schools. And I think it was pretty clear to me from the get-go that you weren't just here for six months to get to the end of the year, but that you genuinely cared about us and how our education went and our school. And um, like Mrs. Hewitt said, going across the podium on Sunday, it was definitely special. Um, and it felt special the way you cared about us and the way you made sure we went out. So I'd like to thank you. Thank you, Matt. Um, geez, I can believe half of what's just been said. I'm going to have a terrific ride home tonight. Uh, <laughs> thank you for those kind words. And I'm definitely getting a tape of this meeting. <laughs> playing it for some of my detractors up the road. Yes, yes. But thank you much. I've enjoyed it. It's like I've said uh, when I first got here, it's been a pleasure to have a backstage pass to this terrific school system. Um, you know, when I was in Yarmouth, we always looked at, at Cape Elizabeth as one of those peer schools that we would benchmark against. And it's been a pleasure to, you know, to get an inside look as to why this school system truly is one of the best school systems in New England. And Meredith is very fortunate. Um, you know, she's inheriting a, a terrific board and a great district leadership team. And the teachers in this district are top notch. And the community is so supportive of education. So it's, um, it's a great place to be a superintendent. And if I was 10 years younger, um, it would be a great place for me to do another gig. But I'm not. Uh, but I've enjoyed the past six months. Thank you. Well, we, um, we took up a little collection and, and uh, Got you a gift certificate to Forest Street. And if you think that two superintendent searches took a long time, wait till you see how long it takes to get a reservation there. Yeah. <laughs> Might want to start. We also have a photograph for you um, of something that Yarmouth does not have, which is the Portland headlight. <laughs> <laughs> so you can remember us. So. Thank you. All right, so I'd like to take a brief break now um, for an intermission to honor our retirees. Um, thank you. And we will hand you your photographs then. So let's break for 15 minutes.
Okay, so we will continue on with our evening. Um, our retirees are leaving now. Thank you again um, for your service to our schools. Uh, we are now on item number six, uh, communications, and we're looking forward to hearing from Gail Schmader, who will talk to us a little bit um, about volunteer services this year. Thank you for the reports you put together for us, too, Gail. Thank you. And little is the operative word. Um, I will make a very short report. Um, you have it in your packets. It's on the web. Um, so ask me any questions you want as I go along or wait until the end or you know where to find me. So it's a pleasure to report to you tonight. It's been a great year. Um, over 900 volunteers have supported Cape 1700 students in all aspects of the education. These volunteers gave the school the equivalent of almost $300,000 through approximately 22,000 hours of service. That's a lot of time. Um, these figures don't include the many hours of volunteer support from parents' associations, extracurricular, and booster club activities. The community also donated over $12,000 worth of tangible resources not including the many classroom supplies that were donated on a weekly basis throughout the year. TVs, computer hardware, portable DVD and CD players filled voids at all three schools in the phys ed, instructional support, ELL, and science programs. The middle school science program also received a full-size replacement refrigerator. The high school functional life skills program received a shed and a large selection of gardening tools for their garden, new gardening program. The Pond Cove Art and Reading Recovery programs received many, many reams of cardstock and construction and drawing paper. Reading Recovery uses the cardstock for flashcards. Volunteer projects this year included support in all three libraries. Volunteers helped with shelving process and repairing re materials, and assisting students with book selection and circulation. Another project involves support for classroom photocopying. The copycats continued the work they began last year at Pond Cove. Middle School Parents Association members extended the program into the middle school this year. A third project provided support for the time-consuming organizational details. High school parents organized years and years of magazines for the social studies department and reorganized the English department's book room. Community members continued to offer strong support for the schools. Over 75 community members supported all facets of student learning. Several long-term volunteers graciously continued their service. Betsy Moyer, who's volunteered for 18 years, worked with Shari Robinson in the Pond Cove Media Center. Susan McVicker, 16 years, worked with Margaret Welsh on reading and writing conferences at the middle school. Ann Waker, 16 years, worked with Betsy Nielsen at the high school computer lab. Kathy Favish, 15 years, worked with Joyce Bell in the high school library. These are all continuous years of service, by the way. Karen Johnson, 13 years, worked with the Functional Life Skills Swim Program on Friday afternoons. 36 high school mentors provided one-on-one -on -one support for Pond Cove and middle school students. They met with their mentee for 40 minutes once a week and focused on social, emotional, and or academic needs. Some played math games and practiced number facts. Some helped with reading comprehension and decoding <coughs> skills. Others helped their mentees gain confidence in peer relationships. Two mentors participated in a very effective pilot project supervised by Pond Cove School Guidance Counselor Bree Gallagher. <coughs> These mentors joined first and second graders on the playground during recess. They role modeled how to play together cooperatively by joining established games or teaching the students new inclusive games. Bree comments, when the mentors were present, the playground was a friendlier place. Students stated, it was the best recess I ever had. When the mentors were involved in the games, students knew that it was safe to join in, that they wouldn't be excluded. I could follow up in the classroom to discuss what made the recess so much fun and what changes the students could make when the mentors weren't there. I will definitely continue this program next year. 
Criminal record checks are now required of all volunteers who have not completed a volunteer awareness session as of July 1, 2010. The checks are completed using names and birth dates. There's no cost to the town of Cape Elizabeth. Fingerprints are not required. This is a new requirement this year. 153 criminal record checks were completed. The process with the help of central office staff was smooth and efficient. All volunteer forms are available through the Cape Elizabeth School website. This links to my Google website. In the fall, parents will be able to complete the forms online through a PowerSchool portal for each of their children. This is a very exciting change that's going to take place. Um, parent data is recorded on their child's PowerSchool record. Teachers can access a PowerSchool report which gives the status of each parent's volunteer requirements. Thank heavens for PowerSchool. Um, the volunteer guidelines were also rewritten this year to include updates to the volunteer procedures. They're posted on the web as well. Volunteers are one of the many multifaceted strengths of the Cape Elizabeth School System. They strongly support the staff and students in a wide variety of student-centered programs. This report will also be posted on the web. Any questions? Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to report out on such wonderful results from our community members. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Gail. Thanks Thank for all your work you and, and strengthening the community by bringing all the, the kids and, and the community volunteers and uh, in all this work to support the teachers and students. Um, we appreciate all of your efforts. And Thank you. Thanks for being with us another year. Well, you're welcome. It's Great. a pleasure. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, item B. Um, we have res some resignations to report. We do. Um, as most of you know, Dominic DePatsy, our Director of Instructional Support, um, is leaving, so is um, instructional support teacher uh, at the high school, Jessica Means, an English high school teacher, Karen Lamb, and our technology integrator, Jake Coker. All right. Um, uh, since Dom is the only person here, Dom, I, I'd like to say thank you for being with us for five years and for all the work that you've done and wish you the best of luck um, in your new position and um, we'll be watching and seeing how things go for you. So we appreciate your service here. Okay. Anything else? Okay, we will move on to new business then. 7A, consideration to approve the K through 12 social studies curriculum goals as presented to the board at its meeting on June 8, um, 2011. Uh, do I have a motion, please? Michael? Uh, I move for the approval of the K through 12 social studies curriculum goals as presented to the board at its meeting on June 8, 2011. Second, Kim. All right. Any discussion? Um, I do have one question or a comment about it. I love the, um, the social work presentation. I was, when we talked about how to support the teachers um, and the huge number of students they have in their um, corrections, is there any way, have we looked at other schools to find a better system that they have? Um, is there anything we can do field trips, talk to any other communities about? That seemed to be the concern, one of the needs of the program. Any suggestions to help the teachers? I don't have any, but I'll pass it on to, to Troy. Because um, it would be, ni you know, be nice if there's something out there, we could duplicate it rather than uh, spend hours trying to solve it. So Kate, your concern was about class load and um, we, um, for members of the public who are watching, uh, we had a social studies workshop where the social studies team um, gave us a presentation of their curriculum and one of the needs that they felt that they had was um, to have more time to work with students on research and um, developing ideas for research papers and, and um, so. Conferencing. And conferencing. Uh, similar to what English teachers need. So they were asking ultimately um, 
uh, for smaller glass loads. Okay. okay. Anything else on the social studies curriculum? All those in favor? Okay. All right, and um, we have some policies uh, for second reading, and I will hand those over um, to um, you, Kathy. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to decide. I think this is the right way to do it, to hand them to you. For... Okay, um, in your packets, um, you will see five policies, and I'll start. I'll go through them one at a time. Um, do you want me to make motions for? Yes. Okay. I'd like to move that we accept policy BEDH, public participation at board meetings, as presented in your packet. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. okay. Any discussion around that? Would you like me to just go? Should over you just this? go? Should we do all three at one time, or? What do you think is the best way to do it? Why don't we just today? do them individually? There's not that many big changes. So. Okay. Um, let me just briefly go over the changes. Right. Um, this policy was at first reading in our last meeting, and it's here again for second reading. There were no additional changes made to the policy from last month. Um, you will see that we substituted a paragraph about um, the board chair um, allowing people to speak um, at a public meeting versus just people standing up so that it's known in advance what people are going to speak about. So it's the same as you saw last month. Mm -hmm. okay. Could I add one thing? I, I did get a comment from a, a citizen, and I, what I explained to that citizen was this wasn't, wasn't an attempt to shut off the public's ability to ask us questions. It quite frankly was uh, designed to allow us to better answer those questions. Um, and the person seemed to be satisfied. At, at first glance, it might look like that, but for everybody to understand, um, sometimes the questions are very detailed and you don't have all the answers at our fingertips. So this is a way we thought we could better serve the public. Any other comments on that? We vote then. Okay. All those in favor? Okay. Okay, next um, I move that we approve policy DF fundraising and the corresponding procedure, which is DFR, which we don't technically have to approve, but. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. All right, any discussion? Again, this is also the uh, <coughs> same that was presented last month to the school board. <coughs> Changes that we're making to our current policy is a definition of fundraising um, and an explanation um, in the procedure part about the $20,000 threshold and why we ask for um, groups to bring $20,000 fundraising requests to the board. Okay. Any discussion other than that? Questions for Kathy? No? Okay. All those in favor? Okay, um, I move for the approval of policy EHA, which is electronic signature and filing. Um, this is here for second reading. We brought it forward last month. There have been no additional changes. Um, this was put together by um, Jeff Shedd and Gary Lenoy um, so that we would have a policy in place for when we start um, allowing parents to electronically file and sign documents for the school versus having um, a paper version. And I know that Gary is working on that now. I believe he's trying to get that implemented for the fall. Yeah, I think that's right. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, any questions for Kathy or any other discussion? All those in favor? Thank you, Kathy. Um, and then we'll just move on to item C, um, consideration of policies for first reading. Yep. In your packet, you will find uh, two policies. First of all you, is CBI, evaluation of the superintendent. The policy that you have in your packet is a policy that has been recommended by Drummond and Woodsum. 
Um, you will see a lot of uh, cross outs and changes. What they did was they took our current policy and um, made their suggestions. Um, the policy committee met and agreed that the policy as Drummond and Woodson provided would be appropriate for first reading. All right, and we don't have to move or do anything on that. All right. David had a question. Question? No, just noticing the typo that probably only I would notice. In D, you have uh, board members will submit individual assessments to the chair suing the evaluation form. I think you meant using. I like suing. That works. <laughs> no, I, that's why I said I thought I, I might be the one to notice that. We'll try, yes. use, try the word using if that's all right with folks. Anything else? Okay, and the other one is policy JLCA. Um, we made, uh, the policy committee made some changes to this. Um, specifically, we looked at physical exams required for school records. Um, our current policy requires that students entering kindergarten in grades 7, 9, and 11 are required to have physical exams. We have eliminated that requirement and we have brought it back to athletes needing um, physical exams prior to starting their athletic season. Um, so there's a, a number of changes in there. Um, and the policy committee asked for that to come through for first reading. Mm -hmm. Any questions or um, Kate? Kathy did um, obviously, well, who? In this meeting, when we went, when you went through this, did we have the um, physician uh, opinion, or um, was there a physician in the room talking about needs or any medical? No, this would be just the policy committee talking about this. Um, uh, maybe I could ask Ken to talk a little bit about the requirements that we have versus. Yeah, it's very unusual for a school to have a policy requiring all students to have a physical. Um, because there's no way of enforcing it. And it's very difficult to have policies that you can't enforce. I mean, for athletes, it's different. I'm almost every school district has that. Uh, you need that policy. But for all students, it's a, it's a bit of an overreach. Okay. So we're going to get out of having that as a policy. And our um, uh, nurse, nurses will be... Uh very happy with this policy, or um, is there any concerns that we have that we should share with them, or is that not the school board's um, piece work here? I, I think it depends on which nurse you ask um, about the happiness quotient. Um, it's not the school board's job, it's that's your uh, work with the yeah, and you know, I'm not into happiness yeah. questions. It's, you know, what's effective <laughs> policies? And um, you know, okay. you want to have policies that are effective. And any policy that can't be enforced, why well, have it? Okay, um, probably isn't effective. Okay. So. All right, David. David, I'm sorry. I had one question about the language on 3A. What you took out and what you put in makes it seem as if you have to have a physical before each sport. I mean, one before fall, one before winter, one before spring. I don't think that's the intent. I think it's to have one at the beginning of the year. But it, by taking out the words fall, I understand why it, would, it, it makes it seem, if you read this, before the preseason for each sport, you have to have a phys another physical exam. So I, I would just make a suggestion. You and I think it was our intent to do have it one in the, for the year. So I'll just... Um, work on some wording okay. there to change it so that if you have a student that has a fall and a spring sport, we're only asking him to get one physical. Correct. For the year. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments on either? Uh, the only comment I had is it was called sharing medical information between school and home. And it, it is the reason just the required physical examinations? Is this the only policy we have regarding physical examinations. I just didn't understand why that would be in a, the medical information sharing policy. In other words, is, is this the only, do we have another policy that references? I don't think. Okay, so this is, this is it. Okay.
the only last one on the, the last one, the sharing of information with school staff. Um, and I don't know. Uh, I, I believe we have some coaches that aren't uh, that are volunteer coaches. So I didn't know if, the, uh, if if you're a volunteer coach, are you considered school staff? And in terms of just a parent, in terms of what information they might want to have. Maybe Jeff could answer that. Okay. Okay. It's it, just so it's in Roman numeral three, the last paragraph. It, it, it you, I understand what you're concerned. It says school staff, but then its examples include coaches, which may or may not be technically they may be volunteers. So it it does allow you to share it with coaches. I'm not sure I understand what you're well, saying. Well, his question was, can you share it with someone who's not a member of the staff of the school? And what about a coach that's a volunteer? This last paragraph says both, and okay. it's therefore slightly ambiguous, but it's, it says share it with school personnel, uh, including teachers and coaches. It, on one hand, begs the question, on the other hand, answers the question. So. If, to be, if you want to be really clear, I think the word coaches would cover it, but they're technically okay. not school personnel either. So you might want to clean that up a bit. Do you have a suggestion, David, about um, wording? And then I would put, um, I, I, I would strike the word including, I'd, um, but say um, school personnel um, and, after the word safety put, and uh, teachers, coaches, whatever, take out the word including, therefore the teachers stands independently. Just strike the word including and change it to and. If you're asking me my quick legal drafting and, you know. What you're trying to do is make a yeah. school personnel and coaches. Yeah. Okay. It will overlap, but at least it makes it separate. Yeah, we'll figure it out by the next time. Yeah, thanks. Any, anything else or are we good? The only thing I, I would say is that it, this probably relates to the volunteer um, policies that every time someone volunteers, we get the fingerprinting and a coaches, they're, they're under, um, asked not to disclose information about to, uh, students. Confidentiality. Confidentiality, so all of that is already covered um, in the volunteer. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Item D. Um, we have a long list of um, extracurricular staff nominations for the coming year. Uh, I would suggest we nominate them in a bundle. I would suggest that too. Um, <laughs> there are 16. Um, um, staff nominations for various stipended positions. You'll have some more at your August meeting. This isn't all of them. Uh, you've got Pond Cove in a district committee, and you also have 22 fall coaches. Um, you don't have the middle school. They'll be at your August meeting as well. Okay. All right, may I have a motion, please? I would like, here I go. All right. I would like to approve, uh, approve, no, uh, move. Move. I move to approve um, the consideration to approve the following athletic and extracurricular staff nomination for the 2000-2012 school year in uh, the district, Pond Cove High School, and high school. Okay. All right, Kate, may I have a second? second? All right. Any discussion around that? All those in favor? I did, I oh, I'm sorry. Seven. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just looking the other direction. Okay, item number E, consideration to approve the following staff nominations. We have four staff nominations here. Um, and again, I would suggest we do them in a bundle unless someone um, suggests otherwise. Okay. May I have a motion, please? David? 
Um, I move that we approve the staff nominations listed under section uh, 7E uh, of our agenda for this evening. Okay, second. Second. Okay. Um, any questions or discussion? Anything that you need to relay to us, Ken? Or? No. I'd be glad to answer any questions you might have. Anyone have any questions about these three nominations? No? Or four? All right. All those in favor? All right. Um, item number F, consideration to grant the superintendent of schools the authority to hire over the summer. You, I thought we put the um, director of IS in this spot. Um, no. Oh, we did. So that was um, so that was five positions. That's right. All right. I can go over that. A little background yes. information. All right. Um, you know, when Don announced that he was leaving mid-May, I was a bit concerned about um, what kind of competitive field that we would be able to attract for that position, because that's late to uh, announce, I mean, to, to start a search. But mainly out of fear that I might become the next interim director of instructional support, <laughs> uh, we did uh, launch a, a rather ambitious um, recruitment schedule. We had a 14-member selection committee made up of administrators, um, teachers, school board members. Um, we did a lot of pre-reference um, checking before we interviewed. When you have 12 or 13, 14 people you know, involved in a search, you want to make sure that anyone that you bring uh, can actually become the new director of instructional support. So we weaned out quite a few people um, and then ended up um, with uh, four that we interviewed. Um, all of them came highly recommended from their, their district. And uh, Meredith participated in the search as well, our, our new superintendent. And I'm very pleased tonight to uh, recommend to you Jane Golding. Um, Jane has been, it's a weird title that she has right now, Director of Targeted Support for the Washington, D.C. school system. Prior to that, Jane was the uh, Director of Instructional Support in Yarmouth, and prior to that, she was the Director of Instructional Support for the Portland School System. So, um, she has my highest recommendation. I think she's going to do a tremendous job. Kim participated in the search. You might want to add your two cents. She was definitely um, very highly rated, and um, you know, both committees uh, uh, enjoyed her discussion. Um, very bright, articulate, certainly knows her stuff, and um, I think that she will be an added, um, you know, welcome added professional to this community. So I look forward to it. I should have added that besides, uh, you know, having over 20 years experience as a director of instructional support, she also has a wealth of teaching experience, both um, in K through 12 uh, at the college level and also served as the chair of her school board in the town that she, she lives in. So she's got a wealth of experience. Um, the last one didn't disqualify her? <laughs> almost, almost. And I want to thank the, uh, you know, the 14 members who participated in the selection process. Uh, as I said, we interviewed four top-notch people uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's always an interesting process to go through uh, when you have uh, four people who could actually become your new director of instructional support. And of course, I, I have a, a wealth of knowledge about, about Jane because I worked with her for 10 years and feel just really so good about the fact that she's going to be occupying that office next to Meredith. Thank you for that work. Um, do I have a motion, please? I move, is this for the uh, Jane, Jane Golding? Golding. Mm -hmm. I move uh, that the, we uh, approve uh, Jane Golding as the uh, Director of uh, Instructional Support. Okay. Do I have a second, please? Second. Okay, Kim. 
Um, any questions or any further discussion? Did we do the other ones already? We did. Yes. Sorry. That's okay. That's all right. You voted for them. You did. <laughs> did I? I'm going to love them. <laughs> Great. Um, okay. I just wanted to ask about uh, kind of if you could talk to Meredith's thinking around this candidate, because I just not having participated in that process, I wanted to hear how how she came out on the on those four candidates and the and the your recommendation. Yeah, um, I, th I think the things that struck Meredith uh, were the things that struck other members of of the committee. Um, you know, Jane's experience um, is just so extensive that um, she'll be able to take on some responsibilities in addition to special education. You know, if you want to move in the direction of that person taking uh, under their supervision all instructional support services so that they become a little um, less like silos and less seamless, uh, Jane has that, that type of uh, experience and capability. So that gives her a, a big edge um, over the other candidates. Um, the, other th the other factor um, with Jane's candidacy is that um, she knows special education laws probably as well as our attorneys do, um, you know, just because she's been in the business that long. So um, there won't be any trips or, uh, you know, mistakes with that stuff. And as a result, you know, Meredith is going to be able to focus on the other things that are very important in the school system. She's not going to have to um, keep an eye on, on special education. You know, you've got a real seasoned pro there, and I think that was very attractive to her. Plus, her background is in special education, um, Meredith. She's, you know, that she did that kind of work. And so um, when I was debriefing her as to which of the candidates, um, you know, her opinion mattered a lot to me. I was biased because two of the candidates um, I worked with in Yarmouth for, for so long. Um, but it was very important for me to hear what Meredith uh, felt about the four candidates we interviewed. And Jane was on the top of her list as well. So you think Meredith would have made the same recommendation? I know she would have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that was critical. I mean, before we began the process, you know, I, I told the selection panel it was going to be Meredith's call uh, as to who was going to be occupying that office next to her, not mine, because I'm, I'm going to be on a golf course. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was concerned so, with. You know, it's, it's just so important that Meredith, you know, feel as comfortable um, with whoever that is as, as everybody else on the committee. Probably more so. Right. No, I, I think that's very important too, which is why I asked asked the question. Okay. Anything else? Okay. All those in favor? All right. Thank you to the group that, that worked so diligently to fill that position. Um, item number F, consideration to grant the superintendent of schools the authority to hire over the summer. This is something we do every um, June uh, because things come up over the summer and the superintendent might have to fill a position. Um, you know, if a teacher um, needs to leave or if we get a student who needs extra help and we need to hire uh, an ed tech, um, there are a million different um, scenarios, I think, where a superintendent needs that authority. So, um, do I have, that's the explanation around that. Do I have a motion? Uh, yes, I would move to approve, uh, to grant the superintendent the authority to hire uh, over the summer. Okay, second. Okay. Discussion? Yeah, just to clarify that, um, I would assume the superintendent has the, well, why do we need to grant this specific authority over this? It's in lieu of what? Uh, board approval. So, in other words, the superintendent is always making hire, hiring recommendations, but typically brings the nom these nominations, just like the, the last two votes we had, brings those nominations to the board for board approval. So this allows the superintendent to com actually complete the hiring process without board approval during that time which we're not meeting. Okay. Technically, under state law, the board has to approve. Okay. It. No, no, I was, I was just. Okay. 
wanted to That's a good question. understand. It's a good question. I, I do have a question. I, I know we, I've done this before, so I'm not going to object to it, but um, I can't remember how it, it, it's, it's pretty broad authority simply to hire. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not limited to emergencies or the fill vacancies or, or something like that. Um, it worked. I just want to say I, I, I would feel comfortable knowing who is going to be here this summer to that, but that's it's a fairly large delegation of authority. Um, but it's also, you have to balance that against the fact that it's the only way you can do it. You have to do it. So I'm, I'm saying it's mainly for the audience that we're not just blindly delegating our authority. Um, we have confidence in the two people that will be doing it, and um, uh, it, there's simply no other way to, to merge uh, law with practicality. So I, I would support it. Well, and while we all think of the summer as stretching out endlessly in front of us, we're actually only missing one month's meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Well, one so, month's meeting can seem like it stretches out endlessly. <laughs> <laughs> and we won't say who causes that either. Right. <laughs> All right. Um, any other questions, discussion? No. All those in favor? All right. Seven. All right. Item G, consideration and action to authorize the superintendent to execute a tax-exempt lease purchase agreement with Gorham Leasing Group for the purpose of financing computer equipment in the amount of $106,609. Do I have a motion, actually? And then we'll, I'll get you. Or actually, anything you want to tell us? No, I think Sorry. we reviewed the next three things at the, um, at the last finance committee meeting. We did. Just to be sure if you had any questions, you asked them. Then so you were prepared to vote tonight. Mm -hmm. But if you have any questions, we'll take David. them. David. Oh, I just got to make the motion. Okay. All right. May I have a motion? Um, I move that we authorize, we, we hereby authorize the superintendent to execute a tax exempt lease purchase agreement with Gorham Leasing Group for the purpose of financing computer equipment in the amount of $106,609, um, as set forth in June 7G of our. Um, Agenda. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. Now, any other questions? Or, as uh, as Ken pointed out, we discussed um, all three of these in finance. So, do you have a question? No? Okay. All those in favor? Okay. All right. Item H. Um, do I have a motion? David? I can speak quickly. I'll do it. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I move that we, auth we hereby authorize the superintendent to execute a tax exempt lease purchase agreement with Gorham Leasing Group for the purpose of financing the high school boiler replacement amount of $150,000 as set forth in 7H of our agenda. Okay. Do I have a second? Okay. okay. Any questions? Follow up? No. All those in favor? Okay. Last item, um, I. Do I have a motion? David. I move that we authorize, we hereby authorize the superintendent to execute a tax exempt lease purchase agreement with Gorham Leasing Group for the purpose of financing a school bus in the amount of $86,267 as set forth in 7I of our of tonight's agenda. Okay. Do I have a second? Eight. <coughs> Um, any questions, discussion? No. All those in favor? Okay. All right. Um, item J that was added to the agenda um, this evening is um, has to do with um, our um, incoming superintendent, Meredith Nado, uh, who um, we are amending her contract. Uh, would you like to make the motion and we can discuss it? I sure would. Uh, I move that we uh, approve the hiring of uh, Meredith Nado as interim superintendent of Cape Elizabeth Schools from July 1st, 2011 to July 20th, 2011. Okay. Second. All right. 
All right. Um, discussion? Well, we're, I'm confused. We're amending it to make a contract go from then to then, or is it born on, on call? I mean, what are the basic terms where we do it? Um, the basic terms are that Meredith NATO will begin employment with the Cape Elizabeth School System starting July 1st and will be in district one day a week. Um, which the MSMA says um, we will need her in district one day a week. Otherwise, she will be um, serving on an on-call basis. It's a very short amount of time that we need her when you include the holiday weekend. Um, we are working out the terms of the agreement now, but she will serve as interim. Uh, the MSMA thought that was the best way to do it rather than to, or to, to amend her contract was more favorable than rewriting her initial contract. Um, she was going to be in district anyway, and um, really during those weeks, those are slow weeks, uh, we felt that having her on um, a part-time basis and getting her in district as soon as possible was um, preferable. Um, to uh, having to pay a full-time or a full-time interim at that time, and I think that will fulfill the needs of the district during the, those, um, you know, not even f uh, 14 days. I think it's it's less than 14 days. She'll be paid a per diem based on her salary for the one day that she's in district, and she'll be paid a level sum for her um, on-call time. And if I could do one further clarification, if I recall this from some discussions, it's not really an amendment to a contract, it's really a short-term contract for that. And as part of that, there might be some minor technical amendments to her contract. Is that okay. correct? Okay. That's correct. That's I, correct. Yeah. And this motion is just to approve uh, Meredith as an interim superintendent uh, from July 1st through July 20th. The, the alternative would be to have to negotiate a complex arrangement with with dr murphy for uh and that was going to cost you a bundle <laughs> this, is, this is very costly. i was just clarifying financial <laughs> prudence warranted uh doing an interim Suitcases three week uh, the door. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just wanted to clarify your motion to amend i think technically we're having a short-term contract with including a couple of minor technical amendments to the contract we've already approved. Right. It, that's why I said the, the motion. I never. The motion I, is I move that the uh, board approve the hiring of Meredith Nado as interim superintendent from July 1st, 2011, to July 20th, 2011. So there's. That makes sense. Yes, it does. I mean, with, with with the explanations as um, roughly basic terms as outlined by Mary Townsend. And we will be hammering those details out in the next couple of days. Um, okay. I'll second that. All right. Any other questions or discussion? All those in favor? All right. Um, we'll move on to item number eight, committee reports. Any committee reports at this time? I do have one. Uh, I'll make it short because I could go on forever about it. We, we have been, both the Town Council and the Legislative Committee of this board, as well as individual members of this board, have been working strenuously with the main uh, superintendent and the main school board association trying to get legislation passed um, that would have freed up uh, per district information so that we could check out whether or not we could get insurance on a much cheaper basis as recommended by our uh, the insurance committee by the town uh, several years ago. Uh, it's come down to a single vote. Um, we've been both the town council at Mike's, Mike McGovern's recommendation and members of the school board and myself have been, I'm sure what Cynthia, Senator Dillwood described as pummeling her with emails and messages. And we've been trying to get her to vote uh, to allow this information to be disseminated. I don't think it's been voted on yet, but we've got the clear message that, contrary to our wishes, that um, Senator Dill believes um, that she will not vote the way that we have requested. 
that she believes that the ben based on her opinion is that um, she will support the bill with a, an amendment that al allows statewide information versus per district information. To our dismay. Mm -hmm. um, any questions for David on this? Thank you to all the board members who um, wrote Humbled. letters <laughs> um, on behalf of this legislation. Uh, any other committee reports? Uh, school board agenda requests. Any requests for our August business meeting, which I believe is the 25th? No? Can't think that far ahead. <laughs> I'll be around this summer. You can give me a call. Um, announcements of upcoming meetings. Anything? Do we have one uh, for Friday? Uh, we're not sure yet. Okay. I mean, no. That's an executive session. And okay. That would be an executive session. Okay. Um, Can I just say one quick thing? Sure. Um, I would just like to extend my condolences to the Holland family who recently lost their son, Andrew, a 2006 Cape graduate, to an untimely and very tragic death. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Um, all right, do I have a motion to adjourn, please? I move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you. It's our Saturday.